guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Talk. We are going to be joined here shortly with our co-host, David Layton, and uh, just a quick update on what's going on here. We are going to be discussing um, scams and scammers in the rock community, which is a pretty hot topic. Um, the bigger the rock community gets, the bigger the chances we are going to have of having uh, scammers. So let's welcome Dave to the show. Hi, Hello, Dave. Hi. <laughs> it's good to How's, see you again. It's good to see you too. How's it going? You know, it, it, it's been a long day and I'm glad to be out in my shop. I haven't got to do it at all this week. I've been busy every night and some other responsibilities uh, after work. And so they, uh, today I got to come home and uh, come up and pet some rocks. Oh, awesome. What kind of rocks did you pet? You know, one of my favorites is this piece of, uh, uh, yeah, my mind just went completely blank. This is, uh, this is Imperial Jasper that, that I picked up. And uh, so this has turned out to be a really, um, there's something about it. It's, it's, it, it, it's a smooth and it's the pattern of it. Uh, and it's just one of those things I like to come out. I just sit and rub it. But then again, I'm very kind of a kinesthetic. Kines, yeah, I cannot talk today either. So the kinesthetics of it are really are great. And it's it's one of the, the things I kind of picked that up. Uh, my wife says I have a little autism. And uh, so I like those things with certain textures. Yeah, textures. We all love textures. Looks like we lucked out. And uh, Courtney will be joining us tonight. Awesome. So glad to see her. We're going to invite her on in just one second here. Let's see. There we go. Fantastic. Hi, Courtney. Hi. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, you're great. Okay. So how, how about you uh, give us a rundown on what's been going on with you for a little bit here? Oh, gosh. You know, same old, same old. Really? Life's been crazy lately um with my other company so i've had some people leave and so i've been filling in and not getting as much rock time in as i want but hopefully that is going to change soon um i'm still cutting as much as i can but you know more slabbing because i can start the saw going and go do with something else if i need to okay gotcha gotcha yeah so uh you're still running your business what's the name of that business it's also cns services so CNS Services does a little bit of everything. Um, we've got a commercial cleaning company. Um, so we make floors nice and shiny. We do a lot of floor jobs. And then the Captain Stones side, which is the, the rock cutting part of it. So, you know, it's clean and shine. It's Courtney and Steve. It's Captain Stones. It's whatever you need CNS <laughs> to be. We do it all. <laughs> I love that. Um, if you guys look in the description of the video, you'll be able to see all the links to all of our businesses. Um, and then you can go on and favorite us uh, wherever we're, we're on. Um, let's see here. So today's topic is going to be scams and scammers of the rock community. And I think all of us have each had our own individual dealings with scammers and also probably some fake materials. Um, so I, I, I broke it down into three different um, types of scams in the rock community. And one of them being fake stones, the next being sellers um, who are selling fake stones or not representing their materials correctly. And then uh, the last one would be metaphysical uh, medical claims. But um, as far as different fake stones, let's talk about that for a minute. Well, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with a lot of fake stones other than people claiming composites are real, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Um, you know, calling a, a, a composite actual turquoise or actual, you know, that kind of thing. Um, other than that, I haven't had a whole lot of, a, of experience with a lot of fake stuff, but I'm super it's the right word. 
I do a lot of research before I mess with anybody, you know. So um, I'm just super finicky and super, super cautious. You know, so it's real important to make sure you kind of, especially if you're looking for something specific that you do the research about it and know exactly what it is you're looking for and have a little bit of knowledge about it. Oh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't agree anymore. I, I, it's super important. That's why we are doing what we're doing. Oh, look, there's all three of us. Okay. Um, so I, th I think um, there's, there's stones that are real, like, um, for instance, lab grown quartz crystals that they take and treat with different uh, metals uh, in right. a vacuum chamber with heat. Uh, Citrine being one of the more popular of those. Yeah, yeah, that's just usually uh, Brazilian amethyst that they've taken out and uh, put in a kiln and heat treated. Uh, and nice. then there's there's like titanium quartz where they take um, the metal and they add that in with the heat and the uh, vacuum chambers. There's um, also moldavite is really popular right now on yes. uh, just about everywhere thanks to tiktok and uh <laughs> that's one that's easy to be faked because yes. we all know uh green glass heineken glass and moldavite look awful darn similar right so uh sometimes you can find them uh especially if you're buying in bulk and if you take like you got 100 pieces, you can separate them out and you'll actually find pieces that are exactly the same as others. So I've heard of that happening. Um, what other fakes can you think of? Oh, Lord. It, it, uh, a lot of it was like I was talking about the citrine. And, and I, actually, I actually see that a lot. So citrine, yes, there is natural citrine, but it is not real abundant and i see a lot of sites that sell citrine and they sell it cheap it is sold as the real thing but all it is is like you said it is treated quartz of one type or another whether it's amethyst they've heated or they have taken clear crystal quartz and they've heated that and done the same thing um citrine is not overly abundant like they make you think it is right right and it's not nearly as yellow either you know you right. see a lot yeah. of those real bright yellows and you know triple a quality well no it's not that's not natural citrine does not look like that right right and so you have to find someone who somebody who you know and can back up what they have right uh, honestly i mean it, it is so hard to tell the, the the fake thing from the real thing in that arena that, that the only way to protect yourself is know who you're dealing with right right Another one I have on the list here is dyed agates. So you know those bright blues and neon right. pinks and purples, yes. those colors generally don't happen naturally in the rock in the rock world. So That's right. That's right. I actually when one of our mining trips, uh, we stopped at a little rock shop on the side of the road and the guy had, you know, the big bin of all the the beautiful Brazilian agates and the exactly that you know and i said you know are these are are these naturally occurring and said, oh yeah no those are all real you know no no they're not I'm like really why are you lying to people you don't there's so many beautiful stones out there you don't have to lie about them like just be realistic you know well and in that same arena courtney my, my big pet peeve is ocean jasper uh -huh. and real ocean jasper only comes from madagascar Right. Uh, the rest, the rest of it is orbicular jasper, and yes, it looks the same, but it is a a trademarked name, and it does come from a particular place. If you look at or, uh, the uh, the real uh, ocean jasper, it it is a little just lightly translucent, does not mm -hmm. have quite the opaqueness of most orbicular jasper, and yet right. everywhere you go and you see people from China, you see it from Indonesia, you see it in a lot of places everything because it's a popular name and it's something that people want they call it ocean jasper and people don't know the difference right 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 yeah and then you you know you 
Ripper Jasper, same thing, right? Just right, exactly. Yeah. Let's let's and call it let's call it Ripper Jasper. Let's not call it Ocean Jasper if it's not. <laughs> right. So go so, to the beach, pick up something that has or or you know orbiculates in it, and suddenly it's Ocean it's Jasper. Ocean Jasper. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it does happen a lot. Yeah, it does. I thought we had a question pop up there. Oh no, it's just me um, adding stuff to our banners down below um so another one is turquoise which courtney had mentioned earlier um taking halite and dyeing it yes. um right. now there are there are some great ways to tell if you're getting dyed material that isn't what you're being sold um one of those would be um taking acetone and a cotton swab or cotton ball and just uh rubbing it around on the surface of that stone to see if it picks up uh, they have gotten really good with the resin and the way they're making them now um, but another good good way to find out if it's a fake is the hot needle pin so you just uh take a lighter get that end of the needle really hot and then try to stick it in the pin um, however, with the new resins, that's not working. So you're going to have to like cut it open and look for either the white core or right. um, try burning it with a, a torch instead. So um, I found too that even if you're, you know, you're starting to cut a cab, so you even get to that point, you can, it doesn't smell right. Like, yeah. I don't know, to me, Good it's, point. Got that, it's got that plasticky smell to it right. or just a smell that's off about it. And that's instant. Oh, OK. Well, this is not what I thought it was. Yeah. Do you do you ever have it stick in your wheels no. or on your flat lap? No. no, I don't even go that far. I mean, as soon as it smells funny, I stop. Like, I don't even want to play. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'll play with some of the composites sometimes, I, and I do have some composites, but I don't cut them very often unless it's requested. So. Oh, some of those are really pretty. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. But same thing. They still, they smell funky when you smell them or, you know, when you're cutting them, it's, it's got that plasticky smell to it. So. They smell like, they smell like paint resins. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Surfite, Corvette eye, Fordite, uh, <laughs> right, 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 a lot right. of those. And you know, they are beautiful. Some of them, there's a market for as what they are, but right. so much of it is marketed as agate or some type of exotic stone. And right. people don't know it. You go to shows and here someone is selling a piece of Surfite, which is nothing more than the overspray from where they spray surfboards. Right. And that paint resin stacks up, they break it loose and they cab it. Well, it's right. not real stone, but people think it is. They don't know the difference. Right, right. And yeah. that's so where they take if I ever, right. And that's where if I ever cut that stuff, I make sure that when I list it, wherever I list it, it's in parentheses, man-made. You know, real simple. It, right. And people will still buy it. People still like it. Like you said, there's a market for that stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you don't have to lie about it to sell it. Just be honest about what you're selling. It's still beautiful. People will still buy it. There's no reason to lie about it. I can't bring myself to cab it or cut it. it it's just not stone to me, and I'm just one of those people. Yeah. I like the the real thing. So right. I kind of leave that, too. you know, it looks nice, but I pass it up. Right, right. Yeah, I don't. I have a couple of pieces of Fordite that uh, a girl sent me, and they are pretty. But I don't know that I'll ever touch them because, same thing, I, I just prefer to cut real stone. Right. I even have a hard time cutting dino bone sometimes. I love it. It's beautiful. But it smells. Thing, it smells <laughs> horrible. When you it's my it. favorite, but oh my gosh, it stinks so bad. Right, oh. right, right. And, and I love and the I, smell and of it. Yeah, and I refuse to cut poop. Won't do it. <laughs> won't buy it. Won't cut it. I don't care what you t you could tell me. It's agatized all day long, and there's no more poop left in it. And I'm not. Cutting it. Sorry, can't help you with that. I have a big chunk in my bedroom uh, yeah. on on my desk that I use as a backdrop for a lot of the photos that I take when I when I photograph a cab, and okay. and I keep that in there. It's polished and and uh, I was trying to talk my uh, I have a 16 year old son who has uh, autism, and I was trying to talk him the other day into licking the rock. I said, Yeah, no, this is how you tell what a rock is, you know, 
Dino Bone. You know, you can lick Dino Bone. Well, then I told him what it was afterward. He wouldn't <laughs> lick it, though. I tried. Okay, I'm so happy that he knew <laughs> enough not to lick it. That's horrible, David. <laughs> he's, a, he's a pretty smart kid, you know, and he knows when Pop's giving him a hard time. Right, and, right, right. Uh, But, yeah, I actually, I cut, I, I kept Copra Light and cut it. I, I, I love Dino yeah. Bone. Um, the smell of Dino Bone is, and, and there's a nice thing about, so um, whether you've got real Dino Bone or fake Dino Bone. Now, there's a good scam right there because we have what what a lot of people will call Dino Wood. So mm-hmm. it's pocket rock petrified wood, but it is often sold as dinosaur bone and people who are uninformed, they don't know the difference. And I've actually seen that happen quite a bit. Okay. And, uh the dino bone when you when you cab it when you cut it it has that almost an oil smell to it so there's a petroleum smell to that when you cut it and that's really uh one great way if you don't know the cell structure of it that's a great way to tell whether or not what you have is authentic right right we got a viewer saying hello my people hello Hello, (laughs) so in the groups um what are some of the the like in the identification groups what are some of the the things that you're seeing as far as scams that are going around that other people are falling for you know not us particularly but you know our sweet members well i'll tell you one of the things and to me the definition of a scam sometimes is a little bit different so a person's actions are as much a scam as they are anything so you'll see somebody uh, post a, a photo of something and they don't really want an identification on it. And sadly, and, and I'm going to try to phrase this in such a way, when you look at where they're from, when you look at the name, it kind of gives you a little bit of insight because a lot of the scams come from particular countries. And so uh, a piece of petrified wood, when they post it, they really don't n- want to know about the, the product, they don't care what the identification is. They know what they're trying to do is get you to either send them a message or reply to that post. And then they will send you a message wanting to know if you want to buy that product. Right. And, you know, they're, they're from a place you don't know where they're at. They're from a, from a long way away. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that do not have the ethics that we hold so dear in the rock community here, and they are looking to take advantage. And I, I see a lot of that in the groups, and, and that's why I joke around all the time when we're texting, uh, you know, in the groups and stuff, that I love the band hammer. Um, I'm the guy who has no problem going there in there and finding the people and saying, you had your chance to, uh, so long. Right, right, right. And I do that too. I mean, it's real simple. You know, follow the rules that you agreed to, or right. you're out. It's it's just that simple. You know, um, some of the groups that I have been adminning in lately have kind of been tried to be very nice about it, and uh, that has all come to a very abrupt end lately. And just real simple, like they're. If you let them get away with it once or twice or three times, you know, third strike, you're out, they're still getting that visibility. So, you know, no, first time, you're out. Can't help you. Um, One of the really big ones is people posting photos of their petrified wood from Indonesia. uh And in Indonesia, they do have a lot of very, really exotic looking stone, but the dark blue with copper, um, they call it native copper opalized petrified wood, right. and and it does exist. It is real. I have some, and I I got scammed my first time. I had somebody take me for six hundred dollars. Yes, I got my product, but the product did not match the photos that they sent me. It was not the quality that they promised that it would be. So they use light enhancement. They use all kinds of tricks to make this look like what they want to represent it as and that can happen with not just not just that but petrified wood it can happen with jaspers um anything yeah yeah absolutely anything and i got scammed oh i hate to hear that uh i have a scam story i'll save that for a minute but uh one of the things when i'm looking through photos and i think that something has been um edited uh i look at the saturation um generally Mm -hmm fingers like this part of your finger right here is not going to be 
cherry red. And that's a really good indicator if their hands are in the photo. And then if their hands are not in the photo, look at the greens. Are those greens just like insanely green? Um, That's that's another clue. Um, But I think they're getting so good at it that it's it's really hard to pick up sometimes. They are. Especially if you're new. Ask for photos that are done in natural sunlight. And if you get it out in natural sunlight, it will take away a lot of that enhancement effect. Um, Anything that is natural is not going to be um, laterally even. You're going to have dark and light areas. You're going to have different saturations in the stone itself. And so you do it in natural light. Um, make them get it wet so you can see, you know, the, the depth of the, the, the stone. That helps a right. little bit there. Right. I always like to ask for a video as well. Send me a video. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to, especially if I'm talking. Now, there's only one guy that I will deal with um, that is not local um, at this point. I just don't, my trust level just isn't there. And this particular guy, I've been dealing with him now for about a year, and it's just, you know, I'll buy a little piece of this or a little piece of that and wait for it to get shipped. And and he doesn't bother me. He doesn't, you know, send me tons of pictures. He doesn't, um, you know, when I, and, and if he does, he'll send me a picture of something and say, hey, are you interested in this? And, and I'll just say, you know, no, nope, I'm not buying right now. I'll let you know when I want to buy something. And he'll say, okay, thanks. And he doesn't, I can't stand the people that constantly barrage you with stuff. If I'm interested in something, I will let you know. If I'm buying, I will let you know. If you're barraging me with messages, you're barraging me with pictures, you're barra- I don't want to deal with you. I, and we're I talking don't. hundreds, hundreds yes. of photos, like not just like constantly. Yep. Yep. And I feel well, that and I have a friend. because, you know, I know that they all need to make a living too, but sorry you know well and and the prices that they're getting now for some of the more foreign uh more exotic wood um it is not what it should be it's like everyone is out to make a fortune off of one sale and so when you see somebody pushing really hard well i only have six kilograms of it or i only have this much and uh you know um I, i can't cut down so you have to buy the whole lot well i fell for that once i didn't know a whole lot about what i was doing at that time that's been several years ago and I still have most of that material. Um, you? The, you know, the sad thing is it's beautiful material. It really is. Right. It's, it doesn't have the blues. It doesn't have the amount of copper that was represented. Right. But I was so disgusted with it when I got it. I threw it over here in the corner of my shop in a box, and it's still sitting there. I've got $600 worth of native, native copper, petrified wood, and, and it is gorgeous. But it's not what I was promised, and that just turned me off. Right. And so... Right. You know, you only have to burn me one time. Yeah. And now I don't trust anybody. It's really hard unless it's people like you and Cheerston, you know, that I've done things with and and, uh, people that I know know the market that you can you can go see something locally or you've, you know, known other people that do business. That's the way to protect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And it is nice now to be able to go and touch and feel again now that the world isn't quite as nuts. Um, as it was a couple of years ago. Um, you know, I've been going to, to rock shows and I haven't been spending a ton of money, but it is nice to go and just have that face to face with people again and touch the rocks. And, I, you know, that's, I miss that part of it a lot. So I'm glad that that's coming back. Well, and you tend to buy a, a lot of product from one or two people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because you know that they're going to represent you, you know, right. They're going to do you, uh, do what they should. Um, and, and even then, I've had stuff that I bought from a guy that I know here locally. And uh, go talk to him. He looked at that and he said, why did I tell you that that's what that was? He said, that's not what that is. Right. Right. You know, um, right. so he, sometimes even they'll grab a hold of something or or they found it at the bottom of a barrel and thought it was something else. And you cut into it. And it's not at all. But they always treat you well. They always do you right. They'll either replace it or give you money right. back, give you some extra something else. Those right. are the people that you trust. So right. the real big thing is if you're going to buy product and you can't go see it, buy it from someone who does it enough that they know what they're doing and they're going to give you a good deal. Right, right, right. And that, you know, you know, has a, a decent return. 
return policy for me is huge. So if I get something and it's not what I thought it was, or I'm just plain not happy with it, it just something happened, it broke, it whatever. Uh, people that have a zero return policy, I can't help you either. You know what I mean? I, I I don't play like that. If you're not 100% satisfied, send it back to me. I'll give you your money back, you know, or I'll get you something else, whatever. Um, so I like to deal with people that have that same ethic, you know, because we could all send out miscellaneous BS and say, sorry, you can't return it. You bought it. But that's, you know, um, that's short-sighted, in my opinion. It, it, that it almost seems odd to think about returning a rock. I mean... You know, yeah. you return a shirt it that you don't like, yeah. <laughs> right? You return a pair of shoes that don't fit, but to return a rock and expect a, a refund, um, it's kind of out of the realm of what most people would yes. think about as a returnable item. <laughs> right, right. Well, I guess for me, because I do, you know, I cut the cabs, right? So right. if someone doesn't, you know, for, for whatever reasons, I try real hard to make sure my pictures are, they're obviously cropped. I can't. I'm not talented enough to get an up close pick. So I've got to crop them. And, but I don't do a whole lot of editing and all of that crap to my picture because I want you to get what you saw in the picture. If you get something and you don't think it's what was in the, like, no. Okay. You know, or if it, I've had a couple that have actually broken in transit, I'll give you your money back. It, it's yeah. It's not my fault. It broke in transit. I packed it. Well, whatever happened, happened, but you still didn't get the product you paid for. So, right. You know, so I, I'm well, real conscious of that stuff. I had computer stores for many years, a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. I had three of them at one point. And uh, one of the things that I built my reputation on was that the product that you bought was guaranteed. And you knew that if you got something, you could bring it back and it would either be warranted. Um, there was nobody in the industry at the time. I gave a lifetime uh, labor warranty on all of the computers that I built, and I had three years warranty on all of the components. I found companies I could work with, and so that attracted people to my business. And it's the same thing in the in, in what we're doing here when we're talking, you know, rocks and minerals. It's the same thing. You right. want to you, that your reputation is on the line, and I was very careful with my reputation. And and it's the same way I I, I, I make pop sockets and right. sell to people to support our charity for the rock tumblers that we give the kids. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of people look at that. They say, okay, well, I bought it as charity. It's not a big thing. So it broke or it came apart. No, that's not how I operate. That's I right. don't care. You still paid, uh, you know, you paid money for that. And I have more than one time uh, covered something, somebody shipping back and forth because something happened. A stone came off of the socket or there was a fracture in it somewhere that you couldn't see. And, and, and they tapped it on something just, you know, the right way when they went to use it. And, and it fractured that stone. That stone split in half. Right. No, we're going to do something about that. Exactly. And, you know, we don't want to be the scammers because that puts us in the same class with those other people. Because right. if we continue doing that, then it does become a scam on our part. Yeah. yeah. And let's face it, in this business, as in any other business, your word is your bond. Absolutely. If people can't trust you. You've got nothing. Right. And yeah, word of mouth of spreads. Yeah, Absolutely. word of mouth spreads yeah. so fast. Yeah. And... And I guess too, you know, for me, this whole, this business is about a whole lot more than making money, right? It's about the love of the rocks and the friendships that are built, you know, it, it's the business part of it. The money part of it is the bonus part of it. The important part of it for me is making the rocks beautiful and meeting the fabulous people that I've met. I've met some real nasty people too, but for the most part, you know, you know, I've had to watch my mouth there. Um, but for the most part, I've met a lot of really beautiful people, you know, and made some really great friends. So that's, for me, is, is what it's all, all about. A really great way to get out and uh, educate yourself and to make friends is to join a rock club in your community. Yeah. Uh, you will get exactly. to know the the old timers who know so much more than we do, uh, pick up a few of their secret tips, you know, um, yes. and just make friendships. You can go rock hounding with these people. They can teach you how to use equipment. A lot of rock 
uh, clubs have all the equipment you need, saws, you know, yeah. Yeah. polishers, yeah. everything. Our, our local rock club has everything. It's amazing um, the amount of stuff that they have. Um, if I ever have a rock, you know, I, I've had on occasion where people will say, oh, yeah, that'll fit in your 14 inch. And it shows up and it will not fit in the 14 inch no. saw. So I've got to, you know, cart it down to the rock club and have them put it in the big saw and cut it for me. Um, I just don't have any more room for any more saws and uh, my husband would probably have to fit if I tried to bring anything bigger in here but uh, but so it is nice to have that that local and I have learned a lot and made some friends at the at the local club so well see now I save up all of those rocks that wouldn't fit in my 14 inch and I saved up for a 16. I, I have rocks that won't fit in the 16 and dog. I'm saving up for right. a 24. There you go. <laughs> But we, we, we also hear, though, and, and we do have we have rock clubs here like the Willamette Agate Mineral Society, uh, where just about everyone there, they have rocks. Um, there are about, I don't know, there are probably 15,000, 20,000 people that are members of, uh, of the club. And so they have digs and stuff. They go on a lot of times that people have that. But we also have things like the 50 Plus Center here has a rock club and a shop full of every piece of equipment that you can want. Now, that's really, really dangerous because when I first started, I didn't have a saw and I went up there and when I experienced everything that they have, uh, a lot of my retirement is no longer in retirement. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because it, it's just not the same when you get a hold of a, of a piece of material or a rock and you want to know what's inside because every cut reveals something different something and there's different. an excitement about that. And so I, I don't want to wait until I get time to run, you know, 15 miles away and hope that they're open, especially That's when right. COVID hit. You couldn't go do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. That was difficult. Yeah. And, uh, and, and they can also teach you a lot about the people around, you know, and, and listen, it's not just rocks that we get scammed on. Equipment is the same way. One yep. of the biggest ones are rock tumblers. And that was my passion when I first started uh, in a few years ago. I started with a rock tumbler that my dad had come out from Mississippi. Uh, my mom had passed away a few years before and he got remarried and uh, she owned a house in Mississippi. So he moved to Mississippi with her. Well, one day he called me and he said, there are really no fun rocks in Mississippi. I can't see what I'm doing anymore. Um, do you want all of this equipment? And he had an old cap mate, um, uh, single wheel cabbing machine that you swap the wheels, swap the blade back and forth every time you want to do it. Great machine. Still have it. I use it every time I make a cab. I still use it as my preform. Okay. So he drove out, brought me all of that, and there was a couple of rock tumblers in there, and I'd never used one before. And so I started experimenting using And then you, you get to watching the market. You get to talking to people. You do research. There are only two or three brands of rock tumblers out there that you want to fool with, and then you'll come up with can I name drop? Um, you come up with brands like Dan and Darcy. And these are the biggest scam companies in the world. They'll have some cheap piece of junk rock tumbler made. And then they'll go on to the rock and mineral sites or into the, the rock tumbling uh, groups on Facebook. And they start talking about what a great tumbler these are. And they rack up sales for it. And people right. go buy these. And then they use them once or twice and here they've paid $120 for $30 more. They could have gotten a good lore tone or a tumblers. Um, and these rock tumblers are such cheap pieces of junk that you can't get any results out of them. Right. And they don't last. They last two or three days sometimes and they quit. So the equipment is as often um, there are scams involved as much as what there is with the stone itself that we use. Very true. Okay, so the last topic on our scammers list is the metaphysical community. And I happen to be a member. So uh, I just, you get on to some of these metaphysical groups and you see these insane claims that they're going to uh, cure whatever disease ails you. And for me, that just scares me because these people are putting faith in something that may have a placebo effect, but, um, it, you know, it's, that's the reason that, um, 
not tectites. What are the the green Heineken bottle? What are what is that one? The Moldavites. The Moldavites. The Moldavites. Uh-huh. That's why that one blew up so so big so fast was because all these claims. Well, you know, you got to be really really careful of that too, and and that's why educating yourself about the very basics of the science of the rocks is is so important. Right, right. What gets me on the metaphysical stuff is uh, the water bottles. Have you oh, seen those? The ones where you put the rocks in where and then you, you drink the from. In the oh. water and then you drink the water. And I have seen people that, you know, are putting toxic Malachite. Rocks, malachite. Mm-hmm. Bumblebee. In this oh, and oh. like, what are you doing? Do you right. not have any idea that you're that you could be seriously hurting people? That's or, water with the side of arsenic. Right, right. Or the people, <laughs> even the people buying it. Like, are you not? Right. Like, why would you just believe what you're told? You know what I mean? I, I, it 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 makes me sad, really. Yeah, um, yeah. It, but education is, is so important. Basic education, guys. Let's. Let's make sure that we're not doing something that's going to harm our bodies. That's the same as, you know, wearing your protective equipment when you're grinding on a rock. You you want to protect yourself. There's so many things that could go wrong in hobbies that people don't realize. Right. This one's no different. That's right. I was just thinking that, yeah. I had a lady order a cab from me, and she sent me a message and said she needed, you know, like a week to pay for it or something. Something had happened. She was having some financial issue. But she really wanted to get the cab because she knew that when she put it on her forehead, it would help with her migraines. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to confirm that because right. to my knowledge, verdite does not help with migraines. But who am I? Um, so I sent her the rock, whatever. But I just, I don't know who who told her that either. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I didn't go a whole lot into it with her either. I guess I could have. I guess I could have taken more of an interest and said, who told you that? But I was a little bit baffled. Um, I'd never heard such a thing. Like, rocks help with migraines? Okay. But same thing. I mean a lot of times some things are about what you believe right if you believe it's going to help you maybe on some level it does right yeah whether it truly does or not physically from a medical standpoint is a whole nother question but mentally you know i don't know it's such a slippery slope it is the placebo effect is so real though so if you believe it enough it actually will help you but right. uh it's right. it's a placebo it you could have had the same effect with a a tablet of rock salt so right. it's all right. in the believing so right. i have had it help me tremendously um my left foot was hurting here while back i dropped a chunk of dinosaur bone on my right foot and suddenly my left foot felt a lot better <laughs> dave <laughs> you're so bad i love it <laughs> One of the really uh, big things that I want people to think about when they're <laughs> when they're doing this, every rock that you pick up, I don't care what kind it is, there is a molecular structure to it. These are chemicals, and they are bonded together in, in different ways. And some of them are more of a sedimentary compilation, so some of them can actually have a raw material of the poisons that you're talking about uh, within. But one of the reasons why in some materials that we do, uh, what was it I got from you here a while back, Cheerston? The um, Tiffany. Tiffany Stone. Yeah. You Big know, one. Big gloves. one. You, yeah, wear a respirator um, because there are chemicals in that that can make you very, very ill. Some of them can absorb through the pores in your hands or, or even through your neck somewhere. And though we use a lot of water when we cap this stuff, when you mix it with water, now you're creating a chemical compound. I mean, this is a liquid. So if you have those rocks in your mouth, if you're putting them in water, um, not only that, who picked this up? What little birdie perched on this thing and messed it up before you put it in your mouth that didn't get washed off? I mean, there's just a lot to this. 
um, that I, I, I really, I don't, I don't put rocks in my mouth. I don't go out in the field. Um, I guess I'm not much of a geologist because I won't lick the rocks. Um, there are a lot of things that you can pick up from licking rocks. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not real prone to that. I am absolutely a rock licker. Are you a rock licker? I, Some people are, and, and they, you know, it doesn't bother them. Um, I'm careful about always, which ones. You know. <laughs> you know, I obviously don't lick the uh, the toxic ones, but right. I am I am absolutely a rock licker. Yes. But you have to know what yes. you're doing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You gotta yeah. be careful. There's some I mean, there's some knowledge that goes with that. Rock, you know. Right. But yeah. Yeah. I I think uh, when I first got married, I bought one of those Himalayan rock salt lamps. It's a great big one, you know, just really pretty. And it was sitting out in the front room. And you guys know I have three beautiful stepchildren. And I would tell them, hey, lick that rock, lick that rock. Well, eventually the rock, like, changed shape. And I was like, kids, how much are you licking this rock? And they're like, well, when we get bored, we lick it. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So oh my after that, I <laughs> we. I taught him about not not licking rocks. Right. I right. I started it. I had to. I had to stop it. <laughs> well, you know, and and to bring that around to the scam part of that, there are so many people out there that that either have emotional difficulties, they have physical um, attributes that they're in pain or whatever the situation. They've gone to doctors. The doctors haven't helped, and there's always somebody willing to offer a remedy. And, you know, metaphysical components of stones are one of those remedies, and it is huge. And one of the things they're real careful of in our groups, we don't allow metaphysical talk. And then I'm going to say two words, cheers to don't hurt me, we don't talk about mud fossils. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're really careful what comes into our groups and what people are taking on, because we, we want people to be safe. We don't want them to get scammed. We don't want them to get harmed. And that is in the physical as much as it is in the information that they take in from what people say in the groups. And so I have more than once I go into the groups. Somebody's posting information that is absolutely not correct about whatever's been posted for identification. I take that information off. And and it's not that, that we don't want people to talk in the if you don't know something about what you're you're giving the information, maybe you're better off not to give it. And uh, because we want exactly. people to have information that's accurate. Right, right, right. We have in one of the groups that uh, that I post in, they do all different kinds of stuff. And and so, but what in one of the rules is if you're going to post the metaphys the metaphysical stuff that you have a disclaimer that says, mm -hmm. you know, this is not medical, this is not, you know, please don't, you know, um, which I think is, is a good idea. I work in pest management, don't lick rocks, rocks get sprayed. Thank you, World of Rock Hounds. That's, That's a really, a good really good point. point. That is a good point. I hadn't thought about that. All right, I'll try not to lick as many rocks. <laughs> Well, and if you I don't know what you're doing, there are some nasty diseases that you can pick up where there's been bird feces, rat feces, things that, you know, it, you know what you're doing. I'm, I'm not going to lick them out in the wild by any means. I generally have a spray bottle for that. Mo most of my licking right. is done in my home <laughs> where they've already been cleaned off. Um, I'm there with you, Courtney. Yeah. I lick rocks too, but I have to <laughs> wash them first. Yeah. One of the biggest yeah. things I see is, is I see all of the time people say, if I'm out, especially in Utah and Wyoming, places like that, if I'm out and, and I pick up something, how can I tell if this is dinosaur, dinosaur bone? And before you can type anything in, somebody says, well, if you lick it, it sticks to your tongue. I get tell you bone one, Dinosaur bone doesn't stick to your tongue. What, it, you know, I've never this, had a bone stick to my tongue. That's crazy. Right. A bone that's not petrified will. Right, because of oh. the, the oxygen in the cells, and it kind of creates a suction. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it does. It's sticky. It's, oh, it's yeah, a very I mean, weird it's, feeling. It's not petrified. You don't want it anyway, right? Not for... <laughs> I would think. I mean, I wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe some people do. I wouldn't. <laughs> 
But, but again, there's so much of this information out there, though, that, that people really. And then the next thing you know, they've gotten a hold of something is, oh, well, that, that felt like it stuck to my tongue and they're selling it as bone and it's as not bone. bone. Right. right. And right. so scams are perpetuated even through people that don't intend it because yes. they have material that they don't understand how to identify. And right. that's what we try to help do in our groups. Right. Right. <laughs> So it looks like we are all having a good time. Um, with that good time, I I just want to give each of you, before we go here, uh, just a, two minutes to let us know what you have going on this week as far as like any sales or anything happening in our different rock groups. Um, so we'll let Courtney, we'll let you go first, okay? Okay, sure. Um, I mean, I'm always posting. I post all over the place. Um, I cut, I try and cut every week. It's late because of the other company. It's been a little slow late for, lately for me, but <clears throat> I'm still posting all over the place. And if you go on my Facebook page, my CNS Services LLC Cabs and Stones page, there is a post that has the schedule of all the different groups that I post in and what I post. Um, what do I have going on? Well, I went to a show. I was telling you I went to a, a regular show and I picked up a couple of really cool things. So I'll just see if I can figure out how to let you see them. Okay, I'm not going to lick it. Hold on, I got a spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lick it on camera. That wouldn't be right, right? <laughs> so this, see, it's always backwards. Is that in focus at all? Is that Mary no. Ellen Jasper? It is a beautiful red. It is called, I had to write it down so I wouldn't forget. It is called Starry Night. And You're it fuzzy. Is, I believe it's from us. Oh, I'm fuzzy too. What the heck is going on? I don't know what's going on. There we oh, go. Oh, there you are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's beautiful. It's red and it's got some gold in it. I'm going to cut that next week. And then I picked this up. This is called River Royale. Maybe this is the one from Australia. One of the guys that's in the, the guild, the rock guild that we have here locally, goes to these shows. And I don't know if you can see the purple. It is all different colors of purple. It is phenomenal. That's gorgeous. Super rare. Where did he tell me? They found like an 800 pound rock. He got 80 pounds of it. It's the only one they've ever found to date. So I'll be cutting that next week too. Did he have a name for it? It is called River Royale. Okay, and I've actually seen that name mentioned in some rock groups. Have you? Okay. Yes, I have. Yeah, as I've soon never as managed I saw to get it, I was like, hold on, I gotta stop and talk to Dave. Um, and then this, which I originally thought was Willow Creek. This is called Misty Mountain. It's a polychrome jasper. Oh, I like that. Isn't that pretty? Look at the polish on that. Well, yeah, that's just water. Oh, is it just water you can spray? It's just wet. I have, yeah, it's I have just this wet. I have this little I, little screen about I this big. I didn't lick it. It's just I just you didn't lick it. it. Yeah. But hopefully when I cut it, it will look like that. It, it should. Uh, it'll be that, gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's my projects for next week. That's what I'll be working on. But other than that, I'm just running around like a mad woman trying to keep my dogs and my husband and my workers happy and still find some time to do my thing. Got my hair colored today. Purple. I love Not it. Sure if I like the purple, it's a little bright. Never done it before. We'll see what it looks like in a couple weeks. But other than that, I'm just doing, you know, trying to do me as much as I can. It's not really working out for me. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Dave? What's going on with you? Well, I need to go rock on. I haven't got to go I in a while. It just, it, it, you know, it's been a long summer. It, it really has. And it, it seems like we've tried to do several different things. Um, my uh, best friend and I, we just had a trip planned going up in the, uh, the Oregon desert to uh, Glass Buttes. We were going to go pick up obsidian up there. And as a matter of fact, I have a piece here that came from there. I don't know. If, see, if, see if they can see that and see the pattern in that. Oh, yeah. And the beauty of that that comes from up there. And 
I only had just a few small pieces of that, and this was the one that was stable that I was able to make a cab out of. So we want to go pick up a bunch more uh, because we do stuff. Uh, I've, I've started making belt buckles now. We're doing some pendants. I've been doing the pop sockets. Um, here's one that I did out of out of a, an ammonite. Um, oh, nice. in uh, in mud and uh, it doesn't hold a great polish. The ammonite itself does. And so we do stuff like that. And what we do is we have on Facebook, we are rock tumblers for autism. And I have a son who has autism and being a special education teacher now, it's just one of those things that we found out that rock tumblers are great for kids who have autism for their communication and their social skills. And so what, what everything that we have and sell we buy rock tumblers for those kids and uh, getting ready. We just gave away two, getting ready to give away another one here pretty quick as we raise the funds. And so everything I go and do, and I'm always looking for uh, exotic stone or any kind of stone that people want to donate. Um, we slap that up. Number one, I have to. I have to see what's inside of a rock. I don't know what it is. I'm just like a little kid with a rock. And uh, and I also work in the, uh, the state mental institution here um all of all of my all of my students are criminals who are are re in recovery and they're getting well and trying to get back out yes. and so i my phone is full of photos of all of the slabs all of the calves the pop sockets and it, it's on almost a daily basis i'm sharing some of those with them and there's really a a healing aspect to that for people who are recovering from mental illness uh, because they're just something, it, they're so beautiful that people look at it and they're just awed when they see it. And so I'm, I'm constantly showing it off um, and uh, you know, forming relationships with, with people who are re in recovery and they're learning how to, to get back to a place where they can be back out in society. So that's kind of what I do. And so anything that I can get a hold of that I can cab, I will, except go. for Fordite, Corvetteite, Surfite. <laughs> What about Bolerite? You know, I haven't even I haven't even thought about it. <laughs> Maybe I should we, go bust up my bowling balls and we see. We were what bowling the other day, and I was telling my husband, when we get you know too old to bowl or whatever, we can just take and throw our bowling balls in the saw. And <laughs> and he's like, "You're not serious, really? And I'm like, no, seriously, people do that." And he's like, "Yeah, they Fun do." Story. <laughs> we can cut anything up. So, anyway. I was actually here a couple of years ago. Um, I, I don't remember what identification group it was. It was not one of ours. Someone had posted this piece of orange translucent stone that they found way out in the desert. And they found a couple of pieces of it. And they were probably an inch across. And you could tell by looking at it that it was resin. But everyone was arguing about what kind of quartz it was or if it was agate. Um, is it opal? I mean, everybody came up with everything in the world. And I told them, I said, guys, I said, I'm sorry. I said, it's shotgunite. Shotgunite? <laughs> I said, yes. I said, this is a bowling ball that someone took out in the desert and they used it for shotgun practice. Hey, and it yeah. does. It, it is. When you look at it, you pick it up in the light, you know, it's this translucent, beautiful color. But then yeah. you look down to the outside and they're wondering why it's so thick and so uh, opaque on the outside. It's pieces of bowling ball. And people actually um, have tumbled it and they've cabbed it not knowing what they had. They thought it was stone. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, thank you what guys about? for joining us. What, you don't I'm have sorry. a story? You don't, you don't have anything oh, for us? Oh, a story for this week. Um, you know, I don't really have anything that I'm uh, particularly working on that I want to discuss until maybe a later date. So okay. I, like to, okay. I like to be a secret. <laughs> 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 all right. All right. Ah, I know. Well, I'm, I'm so bad. For you, Kirsten, what, what are the groups that you represent? <sighs> I don't know. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, let's see. We have rock and mineral identification for beginners, rock and mineral identification for beginners open chat. Um, I'm an admin in your group. I have Dremel Lapidary, which it, I started for this channel um, just so that people who have questions about getting started with the Dremel, getting started on the cheap DIY 
So I have that group. I have Rock and Raccoon, Rock and Crystal Market, which is my personal selling group. And I think that's it. I think we shut down the other groups we that we had going. Yeah. Yeah. At least temporarily. All the yeah. ones I admin then got shut down. Well, okay, we could talk about it after the show. We could talk about it. <laughs> it takes a lot to run and maintain these groups. If, you, if you've never it done sure one, does. it's a lot of work, and it's something that you do every single day yes. to keep up with. Yes. And uh, so, you know, especially when you have 25, 30, 40,000 people in some of the groups, right. it, it, there's right. a lot to it. And yeah. uh, I get I get messages all the time from some of our groups saying, it's been three days since I posted. How come no one has has approved my post yet? But right. there are only three or four of us right now working the groups, and you have 90 people all wanting those posts approved. And uh, you have to go through them, make sure they're not a scam post, right. make sure who's posting it. And it takes us a little bit of time. So it is a lot of work, but I absolutely enjoy yeah, it. It's absolutely a lot of work. I've actually just taken a little step back from a couple of the groups that I admin in yeah. because I just haven't had time to give them the the right amount of attention you know so yeah and it's it's a shame but you know, it's I don't not like you have to, to make a living or anything exactly right exactly yeah. and that's <laughs> it with, with all the craziness that's going on on the other side i just i just had to say you know what i'll come back when i can but i just there's only so much i can do right now you know right. so and i feel like i'm letting people down by continuing to say yeah i'll try and get to that yeah i'll try and get to I'm not getting to it. I mean, I don't know who I'm lying to. I want to, but I just can't. So let me just be yeah. honest and tell you I can't do it right now. So, so, so anyway. Cheerston, do you, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were through, Courtney. Go oh, ahead. I'm done. I'm done. I'm just going to ask, Cheerston, do you have an idea what you think our next show is going to be about yet? Uh, no. In fact, if you two stick around in the green room, we can talk about that as soon as we get off the air tonight. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take Courtney off real quick. Bye, Courtney. Thanks for Bye, joining everybody. us. Bye, Thank you. Good to see you again, Courtney. And David, you, got, you I'll see you in just a minute. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. I hope you uh, learned a thing or two. And uh, we'll see you next week. Next week, Thursday, same, same time. We'll be here.